Good morning. We want to welcome you this morning to St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Washington, North Carolina for this communion service for the third Sunday in Lent. And again, welcome. to the body, 
and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. Then the Lord spoke all of these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no more other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth below, or that is in the water beneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord left the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from 1 Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. There is one, where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not, gave, has got not, has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save us that believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. These words from the Gospel according to St. John recall the familiar story of what is known as the cleansing of the temple. Jesus overturns the tables of the money changers and throws out those who are selling animals for the sacrifices. Initially, we might think Jesus found these temple sacrifices and money changing as abhorrent. But I'm not certain that is the explanation. Jesus was a good Jew. He was raised by his family to go to the temple. And for all we know, participated and accepted the traditions associated with the temple. What offends Jesus is the misuse and abuse of those practices for personal gain. The money changers served a valid purpose in the operation of the temple. The coin of the realm was a Roman coin which had pagan images on it. The temple tax, which all Jews had to pay, was to be paid with Palestinian shekels. So there were money changers who exchanged the Roman coins for the Palestinian shekels. No problem. Except the money changers, knowing that the exchange had to be made, began charging exorbitant rates for the exchange and took advantage of those who were obligated to pay the temple tax. The, sell, the sellers of animals played a similar shell game. The animals to be sacrificed had to be pure and spotless. A Jewish peasant could bring his own animal for sacrifices, but it was up to the priest of the temple to decide the purity of the animal. Quite often the priest found cuts and scratches on the animal and the person who owned it, and the animal failed to meet the standards. But guess what? The priest had a pen full of animals, and crates of pigeons that were pure and for a price could be purchased. And it was those patterns of behavior, the misuse and abuse of religious practices, that seemed to have offended Jesus and compelled him to act with zeal in the cleansing of the temple. One of the learnings for us from this story, I believe, is that we need to be very careful about those ideas and beliefs we hold as being the appropriate religious response. All of us who spend any time thinking about connecting our religious beliefs with our daily behavior need constantly to evaluate and ask ourselves, does my action represent a fair religious response or is my action predicated upon a religious perception that itself has been predicated upon a personal, prejudicial opinion, thus using my prejudicial interpretation as a proof text for a religious belief. We can all pick and choose portions of Holy Scripture that sustain our personal faith statements, but there may be an equal selection of Scripture that would call our faith statements to account. The church itself as a body has always made accommodations with the world around her. I believe, for example, our Lord was a pacifist, and most first and second century Christians followed that path, so much so that the Roman Empire was hesitant to have Christians in their armies. As time went by, the church, through the final efforts of the Emperor Constantine in 325 AD, became the official religion of the empire. The church made an accommodation with the empire, and more and more Christians entered into the Roman legions. This transference of belief from a pacifist founder to an organization that participated in the sustainability of a secular empire, including the use of armed forces, had to be explained. An apology for such behavior had to be developed. And thus in the fourth century, we find St. Augustine of Hippo, 
developing what we now refer to as the just war theory. It is very possible that Jesus would have taken whips and chains to that theory. My point is that we have no guarantee that the interpretive religious beliefs of each of us hold are in fact what God would have us believe. For some, that may be scary and perhaps even an intolerable statement. But I would remind us of St. Paul's statement when he wrote that we work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Not because we fear God and tremble in the presence of the Holy, but because when we are most sound in our faith, we know that we do not know with absolute certainty, God's will for us in many circumstances. We are called to the practice of religion, not the certainty of it. We come to worship and hope that God will touch us in new ways. We offer our confessions because we know we are not yet whole. We receive the sacrament so that God might sustain us and nourish us for another day or week. We leave this place hoping that God has touched us, healed us, sustained us in ways that opens our hearts and our souls to the world around us. And yet we realize that we will have to return next Sunday because the practice of religion requires daily and weekly renewal. I know we are not yet whole. I believe we will be healed. I hope we can accept both of those statements, that we are not yet whole, but that we will be healed, as the rationale for continuing our practice of religion. Amen. Amen.
presiding bishop, for Ron, our own bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Jesus, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you are with the Father are one. We pray to you, O oh God, O oh Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. Have mercy. For the mission of the church that is faithful and witness, it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who do not yet believe and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For blessing upon all human labor and for the right to use the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disease, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from the hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, that we may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those on our prayer list, Riley Alderman and family, Annie, David Murillo, Maria Benitez, Charlotte Grace Buckner, Matthew Burns, Mavis and Rudy Burns, Charles Cantwell, Shirley Cosby, Mary Alice Chapin, Patricia Coffey, Tim Emanuel, Camden Green, Sam Grimes, Gerald Heggie, Richard Higgins, Fred Holsher, David Howdy, Nell Howell, Mary Ann Jenkins, Virginia Keach, Iris Lilly, Bill Litchfield, Jay Morrow, the Marshall family, Kim Malden, Gail Nadell, Francis and Clifton Nance, Joyce Nelson, Helen Nicholson, Natasha Patrick, Angela Powers, Charlotte Reynolds, Shauna Robinson, Grayson Rudolph, Phil Rawls, Acre Samuels, Amy Sassnett, Walker, Dominique Silvestri, Larry Smithwick, Raymond Spencer, David Steenburgen and family, Douglas and Myra Stepp, Rick Stevens, Gary Sprang, and Carolyn Thomas. God of patient and gentle strength, who knows our needs before we ask. May your loving presence guide us as we seek the next rector of St. Peter's. Give us an open spirit, discerning hearts, and clear minds. 
that we may trust your will for us and become ever more united in your, safe, in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Inspire our conversation, deepen our prayer, and make us a community of humility and grace. Raise up for us, we pray, a priest and pastor who will boldly proclaim your gospel, faithfully administer your sacraments, and serve your people with love and compassion. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said, more blessed to give than to receive.
good and joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Preserve it in peace. 
and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Peter and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us and the members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us the spiritual food and the sacrament of God in love. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Under God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up God's countenance upon you and give you God's love this day and forevermore.
up and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.